morning. Glad you're here at our service this morning. We're going to start with To God Be the Glory. <clears throat>
Savior this morning. If you're visiting with us, we're sure glad to have you here today <clears throat> and hope you come back to be part of us again sometime. If you have a bulletin, we're going to look at the <clears throat> announcements we have in there right now and others that maybe need to mention. Of course, still talking about the Women's <clears throat> uh, J- Women of Joy Conference coming up uh, next month. There's still some available spots there and you can sign up out in the foyer. All right. And the WM shoe boxes for girls 10 to 14 is in there. And it tells about the items that they need for that. So if you can be a part of helping on that. Fish fry, I guess, is coming up probably this coming Saturday. Looks like at 530 in the fellowship hall. Ray's going to do a bunch of cooking. All right. Paul Keehan, all right. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, so y'all remember that, all right, senior men's class, okay. This Tuesday, we're going to have coffee and donuts here at the church in the Fellowship Hall, all right, 10 o'clock this Tuesday, and is going to be meeting on Monday, September the 18th at 10.30 in the Fellowship Hall. And, of course, uh, WASH will be starting up this Wednesday, uh, it was uh, postponed this week because Miss Evelyn's uncle passed away but it's going to start this Wednesday so everybody get ready to have a big time there with the kids coming and be a part of that okay come if you're not if you've got a job come and be a part there'll be something that they can find for you to do I promise okay and there's also in there there's a found a golden locket found the, found the owner good deal all right okay all right all righty any other announcements that's not in the bulletin that I need to mention at this time? <clears throat> okay, if not, if you got a bulletin, some of them had them in there, some didn't, but today we're starting the first day of the Dixie Jackson Missions Offering. And they should be. There were some of these and some of them. If you got those, you got the prayer prayer guide in there. The first, And this is the first day of the week for this. And... Uh, all of our money in that goes to our missions right here in the state of Arkansas. And our goal this year is $3,500. And there's envelopes in, in the boxes at each entry that you can get to give your money for that. So we'll be doing that offering probably all this month. We'll be doing the Dixie Jackson offering all this month of September. Okay? <clears throat> and at this time, we've got a video we're going to watch. Friends, it's a special privilege for me today to talk to you about the Dixie Jackson offering for state missions. I wish that I could say that I've known about all of this for so long because I've been in this state a long time and all kind of different sort of ministries. But when I've come to this position in recent months, I want to tell you what you help do as Arkansas Baptist through the Dixie Jackson offering is incredible. I could speak to you for a long time about the different places, the different people, the different ministries. But let me just say that with your faithful giving, you are helping people be encountered by the presence of Jesus through various ministries across our state. We're all familiar with the woman at the well in John chapter 4 and how that she wanted to avoid people. She had special needs, but she came to the well at a different time, but she met Jesus there. And I always remember the fact that, you know, Jesus told her, they talked about her husband, and she said, well, I don't have one. Jesus said, you're telling the truth. You've had five. 
the man you're with now is not your husband. And she remarked as she left her water pot and went back to town and told people, I've met a person who's told me everything that I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Could this be Christ? Across Arkansas throughout the year, you have people who serve through the Arkansas Baptist State Convention and the churches who go in every part of our state to people in various places in their life with different kinds of need and great need, and they're able to be there because you give through the Dixie Jackson offering. I can't emphasize this enough. That is the fuel for ministry that flows through the Arkansas Baptist State Convention. And so you're going to have instances. You can watch some things for different people that have been impacted by you as you've given through your church. I pray that this will be a great year of our giving. I know that I'm going to redouble of what I do. I want to give more through the Dixie Jackson offering because I know firsthand of all the various kinds of things that are being done. You're going to see these examples, and I just want you to think in your mind, across Arkansas, all through the years, these stories are being repeated because faithful people like you are giving through this offering. Could I ask you to do one thing? Would you share this information with other people? Send it to some friends, some fellow church members. Send it to people and let them see. These are incredible stories that you'll have the opportunity to view. And I want you to see them, share them, and then pray and ask the Lord, how would you want me involved both in giving and in these opportunities of service in this next year? May the Lord bless you and thank you for being a part of this special emphasis. Yes. Each week will be a short video showing how our monies are being used in our state. Uh, so y'all be praying about that. And uh, like I said, 100% of it stays right here in the state of Arkansas for mission work here in our state. Is there any other announcement that we need to make at this time? <clears throat> okay, if not, we'll do prayer request at this time. Okay, Golden Stowers family. Donnie Newkirk passed away. He sure did. Lily's going to the doctor. May have to have her tonsils taken out. Okay. Billy Porterfield was in a uh, wagon accident. I think he's in Springfield in the, the hospital. We need to remember Billy. And then there was a, a helm boy with him. Maybe not hurt as bad as Billy, but uh, we need to remember him too. Yeah, I, that's what I heard. He was thinking on his ribs Monday and then his neck later in the week, right? Okay. Adam Boyd family. Adam Boyd family. His name's Gerard? Miss Bobby, yeah, Miss Bobby, if it works up there, hearts with Terry, she's cancer free this week. She found it. Praise the Lord for that. Okay. We'll keep Linda lifted up in her prayer. She she goes through her treatments. Yeah. Yep.
Okay, if there's not anyone else this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, dear Lord, and just we come here, Lord, wanting to praise you today and worship you, Lord. That's what we've come here for, to just lift you up for all that you, you've you done for us, Lord, and and, uh, and all that you're going to do. And we praise you, dear Lord, most of all for Jesus, the sacrifice he made, where we can have that relationship with you and have eternity with you for the sacrifice that he made when he came and he died on that cross. But he come back alive. We're thankful for that today, dear Lord, that we serve a risen Savior. And, Lord, I pray you'll just be with us now as we continue in this service, dear Lord, and if we sing praises to you and lift you up and be with Brother Kevin as he brings your word this morning to us, dear Lord. And use him mightily, dear Lord, as he proclaims your word to us. And, Lord, at this time, I'm asking you, I'm not, I can't go through because I might forget something. You know each one that's been mentioned here this morning. And you know every situation and the conditions there, dear Lord. And I'm lifting them up to you today in Jesus' most precious and most powerful name, dear Lord, for a special touch and a healing from you, dear Lord, because you are the great physician. And we're so thankful for that. We're thankful for what you're going to do. We're thankful for the praise this morning for Miss Bobby. Lord, we're... You do so many things for us, maybe, but Lord, I just want to praise you, because you are a God who cares for us. You're a Father who's there for us, and we're thankful for that. Continue to be with us in this service, Lord. We pray for a mighty anointing here this morning, this Lord, from you, and we just thank you for what you're going to do and what you've already done, and we love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. When the morning comes... <clears throat> Trials dark on every hand and we cannot understand All the ways that God would lead us to that blessed promised land But He'll guide us with His eye and we'll follow till we die We will understand it better by and by By and by when the morning comes All the saints of God are gathering the story how we've overcome we will understand it better by and by all our cherished plans have failed disappointments have prevailed and we've wandered in the darkness heavy hearted and alone but we're trusting in the Lord and according to his word we will understand it better by and by by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathering home. We will tell the story how we've overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Temptations, hidden snares often take us unawares, and our hearts are made to bleed for some thoughtless or deed, and we wonder why the test, when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathering home, we will tell the story how we better by and by. All right. Special music time. Come on, White, Donnie. Um, I'm going to just say I didn't get a chance to get up here and practice this morning because with three kids, there's just a lot going on and one woke up sick this morning. So um, there's that. But um, Linda asked me to sing last week. She asked me to sing this song. So um, this is for you, Linda. <laughs> Speak the name of Jesus over you In your hurting, in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I 
speak the name cause it's all that I can do in desperation I'll seek heaven and pray this for you I pray for your healing that circumstances would change I pray that the Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I speak the name of all authority. blessed by that song. Could I just get an amen from you this morning? I don't know if you're anything like me. I look forward to special music every week here at church. Uh, just the talent and the the spirit. People filled with the Holy Spirit here. It, it just blesses me to hear uh, the music from Jimmy to specials. Uh, it's just a wonderful thing for me. Um, and I hope you as well. If you don't mind, we've got a couple more songs. Um, as we go into that, it just made me think when Ray was announcing the uh, the men's class. Uh, if you come to church here and, and you're not plugged into a Sunday school group, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, the smaller smaller number of people you can gather with, the closer the bonds that you will build. And that's how God moves a lot, isn't it? We're, we're called to encourage each other. Uh, to lift each other up. So I would just encourage you to find a Sunday school class, a program to plug into, and you will be blessed from that as well. There's got to be more than going back and forth, doing right and doing wrong. 
Cause we are taught that's who you are Come on, get in line right behind me You along with everybody Thinking there's worth in what you do Then like a hero takes the stage When we're on the edge of our seats Saying it's too late Let me introduce you to amazing grace No matter the bumps No matter the bruises No matter the scars Still the truth is the cross has made The cross has made you flawless No matter the hurt or how deep the wound is No matter the pain or Still the truth is the cross has made The cross has made you flawless Could it possibly be we simply can't believe that this unconditional kind of love would be enough to take a filthy wretch like this, wrap him up in righteousness. That's exactly what he did. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, but still the truth is the cross has made. The cross has made you flawless. No matter the hurt or how deep the wound is, no matter the pain, but still the truth is the cross has made. The cross has made you flawless. Take a breath and smile and say right here, right now, I'm okay because the cross was enough. Then like a hero takes a stage when we're on the edge of our seat saying it's too late. Let me introduce you to grace, grace, God's grace. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, but still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you all has made you flawless. No matter what they say or what you think you are, the day you called his name, he made you flawless. He made you flawless. No matter the bumps, no matter the no matter the scars, but still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made you flawless. Amen.
Those, those two songs, clean and flawless, right? Because of Christ's sacrifice for us, his blood poured out. Pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for the sacrifice of your son. And Father, just thank you for this time and place that we can come together as believers to sing our praises to you. The lamb is worthy. Thank God. And Father, just be with us throughout the rest and remainder of the service. Bless the word as it comes to us. Father, thank you again. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, give the Lord some praise this morning. For he is in the house. Amen. The Holy Spirit is here this morning. Amen. And he deserves our attention. He deserves our praise. Amen. Amen. Maybe this morning you've got a word of phrase you'd like to share. We want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning. I know it's been a busy week for some. We've been down in Mississippi. Evelyn's uncle passed away. Uh, the last family member of Evelyn's dad. Of, of her dad's siblings and so someone that was very close to Evelyn and uh, she, he passed away and uh, we've been down there it's been a very busy busy week got back yesterday and, but you know God is good and all the time amen God makes a way where there is no way amen and so maybe you have something you'd like to share this morning. I want to give you an opportunity. Give you an opportunity today.
someone. Brother Jackie. I'd just like to thank God for uh, the path that he's put me and Barb on. And uh, one day, it's a little rocky right now, but uh, one day it'll be smooth. And uh, that's all i got to say. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 He's making you stronger, brother. He's making you stronger. Amen. Amen. Someone else. Boy, it sure is good to see you two folks. Amen. Wonderful. God bless you. And good to see you too, sir. All right. Amen. Someone else, word of testimony. Let's go ahead and dismiss for children's church. Children's church at this time. All praise the Lord. Amen. Sam, you got children's church today, buddy? All right. Well, we'll pray for Mary. All right. Amen. We love you. Come on. Come on, children. Just follow her, young man. Young man, just follow her. Wave bye, everybody. Yep, yeah, amen. Go ahead, follow her. <laughs> well, what a blessing it is to have children, amen? You know, I've often said there are a lot of churches out there who don't have the blessings we have as far as children, amen? And it's a blessing. It's a blessing. If you have your Bibles this morning, be turning to Galatians again. Over the past few weeks, we've been looking throughout the book of Galatians. We're in a series called Grace is Greater Than All of Our Sin. And so far, we've learned about the foundation of grace. We've learned about the calling of grace. We've learned about the freedom of grace, the acceptance of grace, the righteousness of grace. Last week, we learned about the covenant of grace. And this week, we're going to be learning about the oneness of grace. The oneness of grace. Of course, we'll be in chapter 3 of Galatians. We'll look the last few verses of chapter 3, verses 26 through 29, in just a moment. Do you know in the United States there are some 332 million people just in the United States of America? And out of these 332 million people, there are five major religious groups. Christians make up 230 million of the 332 million Judaism makes up about 7.3 million people in the United States. Buddhism makes up around 4.2 million uh, people here in the United States. Islam has about 300, uh, about 3.5 million, 3.5 million followers here in the United States. And Hinduism has about 2.5 million followers here in the United States. Out of the 230 million people in the United States that profess Christianity, 
about 140 million of those are Protestants. Now, Protestants, who we are a part of the Protestant church, we could say, I guess. But Protestants are those who, like us, believe that justification or salvation comes through faith alone in Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Jesus is the way. Each year about 15 or so of our men, we go to the Gridiron Men's Conference. And while I'm thinking about gridiron, yesterday was a wonderful day in college football. Amen. The Razorbacks won again. Amen. Ole Miss won. Mississippi State won. And Alabama lost. Amen. Praise the Lord. A wonderful day. Now let me get back on the message. Amen. But anyway, each year we go to the gridiron conference in Alabama. And you know, one of the things that I love the most about the Gridiron Conference, of course we have wonderful speakers each year, but one of the things that I love, I believe I love it even more than the speakers, I love hearing those eight to 10,000 men singing in unison and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. There's just something about that many people uplifting the name of Jesus that makes glory bumps go all over my body. This year was a special year. During my first pastorate at Lake Como Baptist Church, there was a young man who dated one of my daughters for a short time. And uh, I won't give you his name, but his first name is Chris. And... Uh, I kind of kept up with Chris through the years, and Chris became an addict, got off into drugs, and lost his way. And at this year's men's conference, as I was sitting there on the floor, looking up at the stage, I took a picture, and I posted it on my Facebook page. Now, Chris and myself, we're friends on Facebook, and so I posted the picture of where I was sitting, and the stage was there at the men's conference. And about 10 or 15 minutes, I think maybe, Dan, you were sitting there. Someone was there with me when this happened. But in a few minutes, I got a tap on the shoulder. And I turned around to see, and you know who it was? It was Chris. And he said, Brother Kevin, I saw this on Facebook, and I wanted to come and find you. And let you know that I've been saved and God has changed my life and I'm alive and I'm on fire for God now and my church folks, amen, at the men's conference. He's married and got little kids and I just hugged him and I cried and I said, Chris, I'm proud of you, amen. I'm proud of you. But you know those eight to 10,000 men who are at the conference, they're made up of all types of denominations. They're made up from all walks of life, but they come together at this conference to do nothing else but to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And that makes it special, amen, to hear those voices in unison lifting up the name of Jesus. Could you imagine 230 million Christians in the United States of America if we could come together, together, and worship the Lord Jesus Christ in one accord? What a mighty force we would have, we would be, amen, for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because... We're all united by one common denominator, and that is Jesus Christ. Listen, I don't care if you're Methodist or Lutheran or Baptist or Nazarene or Church of God or Assembly of God or United Pentecostal. I don't care if you're Presbyterian or any of the other thousands of perhaps denominations that are out there. If you accept the Lord 
the lordship of Jesus Christ, if you've been saved by the blood of the Lamb, amen, if your promise of salvation rests upon Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are my sister and my brother in Jesus Christ, amen. I don't care if you're white or black, Asian, male or female, smart, dumb, pretty, ugly, wealthy or poor. I don't care who you are. If you accept the lordship of, the, of Jesus Christ and your salvation is based upon the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the sins of the world, then you're my brother or my sister in Christ. Amen. This is what the oneness of grace is all about. We are united by the grace of Jesus Christ. We are united by the grace of God. We may be all from different backgrounds, different cultures, different geographical places. But when it comes to Jesus... We should set our differences aside and come together. Amen. And you know what? It's a supernatural thing, really, that all peoples can be brought together under one common belief, and that is the belief in our Lord Jesus Christ. I know we have all sorts of denominations out there, all sorts of beliefs about different things, but Jesus is our centerpiece, and it's in faith alone in Him that saves us. Even though we're part of different churches, we're all part of one church, and that is His church. Amen. Because I've got news for you. Don't throw anything at me. When you get to heaven, it's not going to be the sign over your door that gets you there. Mm. It's not going to be the sign over the church door that gets you there. It's going to be the sign over your heart that gets you there. Amen. Whether you've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, that's what's going to get you to heaven. Amen. You say, Brother Kevin, does it matter what you believe? Sure it matters what you believe. It does matter what you believe. But there's too little time and there's too much work to be done for the kingdom to, for us to be bickering with one another. If we're all a part of the family of God, let's get busy working for the king of kings. Amen. Well, let's read our text. All right, go ahead and read our text. If you got that, say, I've got it, Pastor. Let's stand in the reverence to the reading of God's Word, Galatians chapter 3, beginning at verse 25, and we'll read through verse 29, the end of the chapter there. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you all are one, or for you are all one in Christ Jesus, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. Thank you for these who are here this morning, those who are watching today. Lord, we pray a special blessing upon them. Lord, our desire today is to bring you glory. And so, Lord, we ask you to take your word and let it sink deep into our hearts. Lord, let it change our minds and change us, Lord Jesus, into the likeness of your Son, and we ask this in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today I only have two points, two specific ways that we're united. And here's the first one. The first one is we are united to Christ. Do you know Jesus never commanded us to be united to a particular denomination 
Jesus never commanded us to be united to a particular theological system, but he did call us to be united to him. Amen. Listen, we're, you, we are not united to Christ because of the sign in front of the church in which you attend. Amen. Our unity comes from knowing Christ. Amen. Listen, you can have your name on every church roll in Nizard County. You can be a member of the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, and I can go through and name every one of them. You can be a member of every church in Nizard County, but I want you to know something. When you breathe your last breath here, it's not going to be the church roll that gets you into heaven. It's going to be the book of the, your name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's what's going to get you into heaven. It's going to be God's roll. Amen. Brother Kevin, uh, boy, you, 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 you must not be wanting to grow our church. Boy, you talking about church? Let me tell you something. I'm not worried about growing First Baptist Church. I'm worried about growing God's church. Amen. 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 You being united to Christ. You've got to be united to Christ. That's what's going to count. And Paul gives us two ways in our scripture today how we're united to Christ. First, he says, we're united to Christ through faith. Look at the first verse there, 26, that we read. For you are all sons of God. How? How did he say? How did he say? Through what? Faith in Christ Jesus. Listen, I'm not a child of God because I have the catechism down pat. I'm not a child of God because I know the Apostles' Creed by heart. I'm not a child of God because I know Westminster, the Westminster Confession. I'm not a child of God because I partake in communion when we have it. I'm not a child of God because I can quote the 23rd Psalm. I'm not a child of God because I tithe every Sunday. I'm not a child of God because of any of these things. I'm a child of God not because I'm a member of First Baptist Church. I'm a child of God because I've asked Jesus to come in and he forgave me of my sins and he wrote my name down. Amen. I have faith in Jesus. Amen. That's why I'm a child of God. And if your faith is in anything other than Jesus Christ, your faith is in the wrong thing. Amen. That's the only way we unite with Jesus is through faith in Him, in Him alone. And you know what? If you've placed your faith in Him, then we find ourselves united. We're united. The issue isn't which denomination you belong to or which church you go to. You know, it's kind of strange. When you're out witnessing, a lot of times... When you ask people about their salvation, do you know what they say? They say, I'm a member of such and such church. I've heard that so many times. One time I was down at Between the Buns, and there was a guy sitting down there eating. And, and when I got up to go to leave, I went over and introduced myself. I didn't introduce myself. I went over to him. I introduced myself later, but I, w I went over to him and I said, I witnessed to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, oh, I'm a member of the Baptist church. Well, I was kind of intrigued to ask him which member church, right? Which Baptist church, right? So I said, well, which church are you a member of, the Baptist church? And he said, oh, First Baptist here in town. I said, well, who's the pastor there now? And he said, ha, you got me. <laughs> you got me. He said, I hadn't been there in a long time. I said, well, I kind of knew you hadn't because I'm the pastor of the First Baptist Church <laughs> here in town. And I haven't seen you. But a lot of times people tell us when we're witnessing, oh, I'm a member of such and such church. And it's wonderful that you go to church. You need to be in a church. Amen. You need to be a part of a body of Christ. 
in your local community. You need to be participating and learning and worshiping with other believers. That's important. But that's not what's going to get you there, amen. It isn't what denomination or what church you go to. It's not all of that. It's who do you believe in, amen. Who is your faith in? Who are you trusting for your salvation? Jesus. So we're united to Christ through faith. Secondly, Paul talks about we're united through baptism. We're united to Christ through baptism. Look at verse 27 again. For as many of you as were what baptized into Christ have put on Christ. So here's what happens. When we exercise our faith in Christ... We believe in Jesus. We ask him to come into our heart, forgive us of our sins. We have faith in Jesus. And when that happens, we're saved. He saves us. And that's when we're united to Christ by faith. Then something supernaturally happens. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into the family of God. So Jesus, faith in Jesus saves us and then we're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the family of God. So we're united in Christ through faith and through baptism. The scripture actually says that the Holy Spirit, we're baptized by the Holy Spirit and by fire. Listen to Matthew 3.11. It says, John's talking here. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, talking about Jesus, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Listen to what he says. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then in John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus answered and said these words, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water, talking about being born from your mother's womb, and the Spirit, talking about salvation, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You say, well, Brother Kevin, what is that? What is this place up here? What, what is this? And I see people being submerged up here in water. I thought that was baptism. What's going on up there? What is that? Let me tell you, first of all, being baptized up here will not save you. Amen? I hope your faith hadn't, hadn't been in that. Because being dunked in water will not save you. You could have been baptized in every creek and every river and every pond and every baptistry in Izzard County. So much that all the tadpoles know your social security number by heart. But let me tell you something. If you're trusting in baptism to get you to heaven, it's not going to work because that's not how you get there. Baptism will not save you by water. Amen. Only being baptized by the precious blood of Jesus Christ will save you. So, Brother Kevin, should I be baptized in water? Then what's going on up here? And the answer to that question is yes, you should be baptized up here. Jesus commanded us to be baptized. He commanded us. He was our example, and we should be baptized. Jesus was baptized. He was submerged in water, and we should be submerged in water. It is a picture of what has happened on the inside of us. When we are saved, the old man is dead, and the new man has come forth. We've been made new creatures. And just as baptism is symbolic of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, so that happens in our lives. When we're saved and we're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the family of God, we should... Do two things. We should verbally tell people about it. Amen. We should testify of what's happened. But not only should we testify, we should paint a picture of what's happened. We should paint a picture of what happened. You say, well, Brother Kevin, I'm not, good a, I'm not too good a painter. Well, God's fixed that for you. There's the picture right there. You're supposed to go up there and be baptized. 
a picture of what's happened on the inside. Being dead to the old man. Being crucified with Christ. And being risen in the newness, in the likeness of Jesus. That's what baptism is a picture of. But it doesn't save you. That's not what saves you. Amen? But we're united to Christ by faith and we're united to Christ by baptism. Baptism that the Holy Spirit baptizes us when we're saved. Now we call this the believer's baptism. But it's only a picture of what's already happened. And it doesn't save you. Amen. So first of all, we're united to Christ. Secondly, because of grace, we're united to each other. Now, most Christians can kind of, they kind of amen to the fact that Christians are all united to Christ. Amen, preacher. I've been united to Christ. But the second point is a little harder to swallow for some Christians. Now, I know not you, but I'm talking about other folks out there. But see, the truth is, we have a bunch of different denominations. We've got a bunch of different names over the doors of buildings all over this country. And guess where those names came from? They didn't come from Jesus. God's not the author of confusion. Amen. Come on. Come on now. I'm going to preach now. You may not like it, but it's going to be the truth. Amen. We have so many different denominations and so many different churches and so many different beliefs today, not because of Jesus, it's because of man. Amen. Jesus only has one church. And when you go to heaven, it's going to be because you, you were a member of his church. Amen. The, true, the truth is Jesus is the head of one church, not many churches. Amen. And if you're united to Christ, then you're also united to all the others who are united to Christ. We all have a common denominator, and that is Jesus Christ has come into our hearts and changed us. Doesn't matter what denomination they belong to. Doesn't matter what color their skin is. Doesn't matter which one of the two genders that you happen to fall into. If you are a child of God, if you've been saved, you're a child of God, and you're my brother and sister. Amen. And Paul comes right out and tells us in verse 28. He says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. You say, what in the world is he talking about there? See, back in Paul's day, well, first of all, he's talking about that the distinctions have been removed. That the distinctions have been removed. And back in Paul's day, it wasn't uncommon for a Jewish man to stand up and say, Lord, I sure am glad I'm not a Gentile. Lord, I sure am glad you didn't make me a woman. Can you picture that was happening in biblical times? Jewish men would stand up and thank God they wasn't somebody else. And remember... In Galatians, this whole letter was written to the Galatian church because they were legalist people inside the church trying to teach something different, trying to teach that there, you had to be saved by works, you had to be saved through circumcision, you had to be saved, and that there was a difference. There was a difference. Only certain people could be saved. It had a lot to do, they thought, with race or rank. Or gender. They were trying to divide the church. That's what Satan does. He tries to divide and conquer. Amen. He'll try to do that with your marriage. Amen. He'll try to do that with your friends. And he'll try to do that in the church if you let him. Amen. But Paul comes along here and he says, Nope, not a, it's not going to happen on my watch. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. And the truth is the distinctions have been removed. Amen. Let me tell you something. In Jesus Christ, there's no room for racism. 
And I know we live in a part of the country, and that's all I'll say about that. But there's no room for racism in Christianity. And there's no room for social status, have to be a part of a certain social bunch or a social status. There's no room for that in Christianity. There are not white Christians. There are not black Christians. There are not male Christians. There are not female Christians. There are not rich Christians. There are not poor Christians. If you're in Christ Jesus, you're just a Christian. Amen. Amen. Now, God does have roles for different people. And that's not what we're talking about, folks. We're not, we don't use this scripture for, to change the roles that God has placed in his word. He doesn't change those roles. And we do have roles when it comes to gender and things of that nature. And we're living in a time where a lot of people are confused about gender. Amen. But let me tell you something. Remember what I said? God's not the author of confusion. Amen. And there's only two genders. Amen. Facebook will probably pull me off. We'll probably be in Facebook jail from now on. But hey, I'm going to preach the truth. Amen. Paul is saying here that anybody can come to Jesus and be saved. Doesn't matter where you're from. Doesn't matter who you are. Amen. You can come to Jesus and be saved. Anyone can become a part of the family of God, which leads to the second thing here. We've all been adopted. We've been adopted into one family. Look at verse 29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There are not several families of God. And by the way, God doesn't have any grandchildren either. Amen? He doesn't. God has no grandchildren. He only has children. Amen? You say, well, what do you mean by that, Brother Kevin? That means if your mom and daddy are Christians... You're not getting in heaven under their shirt tails. Amen. Let me tell you something. You've got to have your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. But we're all part of one family. You're either in the family of God or you're not in the family of God. So if you're a child of God, if you've been saved, then our next two points. We're all children of God and we're children of Abraham. So God has one family through his grace. He's adopted us into that one family. You've been adopted into the family of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise God. And I know if you could put this family here in this church in one gigantic room and mix us all together, and we would probably wouldn't look much like a family because we come from a lot of different places and, and a lot of different things going on in our lives. But if you, you're looking on the outside, if you could look at the, on the inside of this bunch of folks even right here today, you would see that the there's something all alike in us, and that is Jesus' blood has been covered. Our sins have been covered by Jesus' blood. Amen. As far as being a child of Abraham, you know, people of faith like to say we're children of Abraham because they think there's some, some kind of special status being a child of Abraham. I guess because of God's promises and but I want to tell you something. I'm not a child of Abraham because I have Abraham's blood running through my veins. I, 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 I'm not any blood kin to Abraham that I know of. I'm a child of Abraham because I have the same faith that Abraham had. I had the same faith in God that Abraham had. And because of Jesus, I can say I am a part of God's family. and That I am a brother to Abraham. Amen. But it's because of Jesus. Now, in closing this morning, you know, we talked about the grace of God brings us all together who are saved. It unites us, and it does. But I want you to know something this morning. God's not a respecter of persons. And that through God's grace, we can all be saved. We can all go to heaven. In Revelation, we read... After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. If you're here today and you're not a part of God's family, if you're watching today, and you're not a part of God's family, 
Let me invite you to become a part of God's family. Let me invite you to allow the King of kings and the Lord of lords to come into your life and create you. And you doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been. God wants you in his family. You know, you may be out there today and you may think no one cares for you. You may feel like you're all alone. Your family may have deserted you. But I want you to know something. If you ask Jesus into your heart, you'll become a member of God's family. And the Bible says that when that happens, the angels in heaven rejoice. Amen? You can be saved today. God's not a respecter of persons. You know, you've heard me say this in past messages, that the ground is level at Calvary. You've heard me say that a bunch. And sometimes we have a guy that comes, he's been here three or four times, his name is Mark Lanier. He wrote a song entitled, The Ground is Level at Calvary. And in closing today, I want to sing you that song. Because God is no respecter of persons. He loves you, and he wants you to become a member of his family today. The ground is level. great riches with money to burn or maybe survival is your main concern you may be world famous but what good might that be for the ground is level at Calvary oh the ground is level at Calvary it's fully accessible for you and for me, no matter who or what, when or where you may be, the ground is level at Calvary. Amen. Well, a doctor or a lawyer, a beggar or a little child, it makes God no difference who walks down that aisle, for he said whosoever will let him come on to me for the ground is level at Calvary oh the ground is level at Calvary it's fully accessible for you and for me, no matter who or what, when or where you may be, the ground is level at Calvary. Oh, the ground is level at Calvary. It's fully accessible for you and for me. to the piano for just a moment. Maybe today you need to come know Jesus as your personal Savior. We're going to say goodbye to our folks that are watching today and say thank you for watching today.